G'day viewers and listeners, it's Ed Fox and Dr. Doug Hur. So he's my guest today on Nashville 2. Nashville 2, remember, we're telling your story because you're important to Nashville 2. So let's get your story out there. If you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. I'll have my contact details over in the show notes. Uh, and you can listen to this on all your major podcast platforms. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Facebook. Like, you know, we're everywhere. Uh, g'day, Dr. Doug. How's it going? It's fantastic. Ed, how are you doing? I'm doing great, mate. And I'm so excited to have you on the show. And I love the fact the way that you've named sort of rhymes. I hope you don't mind me calling you like Dr. Doug. Like that just like works for me, if that's okay. Perfect. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So uh, Dr. Doug, how long have you been in the Nashville area? I have actually been here since about 1999. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I made a really good choice. In 2009, I left for two years. I was uh, doing a training in Oregon, and um, yeah, so I missed the flood, if you were around for that. We actually, uh, we came to, my, my wife and her sister came to visit Nashville, and they got out of the Sunday afternoon when it had just started raining before the flood. So, oh, I just saw something up in that little corner on your screen. You've got a ninja hiding in the branches. It's That's true. pretty clever. <laughs> I like that. So, okay, so you've got an event coming up. Let's talk a little bit about your event. Uh, starts on Monday, I think, right? So, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little sneak preview. Probably roll out on Sunday afternoon. Okay, and that's in case somebody's watching this a year from now and they missed it. Too bad you missed out. Sorry. Um, what date? What date is this gonna start then? It'll be Sunday, the 14th of November, 2021. 2021. Okay, so okay. we'll get this video out tonight or something. So this will be this is uh, November 12th. So we'll get that out and, and start getting it around. So tell me a little bit about your background, like doctor of what? Yeah, so I was a, trained as a doctor of clinical psychology. Okay. And I, um, I moved, actually, when I moved back to Nashville, there was a kind of a specific reason for that. I joined faculty at Vanderbilt. Okay. At that point, became a health psychologist. Started working with chronic pain and chronic disease. Um, you know, that's a pretty overwhelming situation for folks. Right. And I learned the power of stress and also the power of changing your relationship to that stress. Um, so, and while I was there, I also started working with doctors about 2014. Since that time, I probably were five, 600 doctors. Right. And these are doctors, obviously, you know, often with chronic stress or chronic pain and chronic disease, it just stops your life. And, and it's really challenging. With the doctors, they're incredibly high functioning. But I noticed that the stress was something that was really important to both of them. Right. So I've been teaching meditation skills to doctors and patients for years. Actually, I don't have patients anymore, retired that license. And now I just do uh, coaching. Because, you know, the psychology model is based on a medical model, which starts out with the idea that something's wrong with you. Right. And I start out with the idea that something is right with you. That's really where I am. And there's Go this ahead. problems of the past. That's real. You know, I deal with that because everybody suffers and everybody has stress in their current life and problems from the past. But what we're really caring about is how am I living now and what's the future that I'm creating? Right. That's, that's what excites me. Yeah. So I just shifted into a coaching model based on how we use language and how we uh, train our brains to create the future we want. Well, I just got this dad joke percolating in my head, which if anybody that knows me, you know, <laughs> uh, I wrote a book on reverse psychology. I did. Uh, don't buy it, everybody. Don't buy it. There he is. That's, that's all I got. So uh, anyway. Ever met Ed? That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, follow me on TikTok, guys. Special Ed Fox dad jokes. Uh, you you'll go. get your daily dose of dad jokes and it reduces your stress. Would you agree with that, Dr. Doug? Absolutely. Laughter. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Reducing it. stress is, this is what I'm really, okay, now, not entirely. Not okay. entirely. It changes your relationship with stress. Okay. Right? Because your life is just as stressful as it's always been, but you don't care because you're having fun. Right. Okay. Right? Good point. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I, I'm a little nit, nitty, nit, nitpicky. I'm a scientist, right? I am a scientist, and I I love figuring out what actually works for people. Right, right. So in in my course, this is coming up um, Sunday. We're going to start, right. and Monday we're going to hit the ground running. That's why I want to kind of start on Sunday. Cool. Um, Ninja skills for stress and success is a training 
where we help people to live your best life. So we're going to start out with the best coaching. There's like 20 years of neuroscience now on coaching. Okay. Figuring out what's the best way to get somebody from here to there. We're going to start with that process and we're going to, that's the top level of this course. And I've studied what makes people happy. We're going to actually assess the factors in your life that relate to happiness. And then we're also going to do the, the bottom level, right? So we're going to, we're going to deal with what everybody looks at is the outside 10% of your life, 90% of it's inside, right? Maybe 50% 50 of it is just a given your genetics and whatever. Um, but so much of what's important is what's happening right in here. And you know that, you know, you can have the same life on the outside, but one person's having a ball and the other person isn't. Right. And so much of it. Glass isn't. half empty is the glass half full. I'm always right. thinking it's half full because I'm a positive guy. You know, yeah. I've got a friend that said he was sure he was a pessimist. Even his blood was B negative. <laughs> yeah. One of the things, yeah, we've already pointed out, Ed does not have an off switch. So don't even look for it. It's a waste of time. So, of time. But, but these people that want to, who's the target audience? I mean, this isn't some dry yeah. analytical course where we're not going to have any fun, right? This is, I know, right? But people, I don't want them watching this and going, oh, like he's a doctor. Okay, so it's not going to be that now. Right, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. So who's um, the target audience yeah. that could get you know what? value? Yeah, the target audience is actually busy professionals. And okay. it's a really important thing that, you know, most busy professionals go, oh my gosh, of course, I don't have time for that. And you know what, the holidays are coming up. Oh my God, I don't have time for that. This is gonna take less time than whatever you're already doing. Right. And it's gonna give you more time. When you realize the power of what this course offers by living it, that's the only way you're gonna realize it because it's a gift that it's gonna keep on giving. Now, this is the beta version. I jumped off the cliff, making the parachute on the way down. My and... kind of guy right there, Dr. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> Dr. Doug with his dose of ADHD. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just... I, I don't know if you see it, but sometimes my camera goes in and out of focus. I, I call that camera. It says it's a HD camera. It's an ADHD camera. It can't focus. You know, it's the same sort of I totally thing. get it. I totally get it. Keep me on track, Ed. Okay, sorry. Know, <laughs> so, no, so you've done this course. It's gonna. You got a sneak peek on Sunday. People yeah. can like. So, so what we're gonna do is at the top level, you're gonna start out with a goal, personal or professional, and you know Sunday's investment of time is probably half an hour. When you're going through the rest of your week, mostly it's gonna be probably less than 15 minutes a day, and it's not even at the same time. What I'm gonna do is change the habits of your brain. And what that means is you're going to get prompts throughout the day to take two minute breaks. And during that two minutes, we're going to do some really specific training. I we don't have time to explain everything now. Sure. But basically, what what stress does to people is it increases the negativity in their brain. You can hear this if you are realizing this inner critic is at play. Right. You know, if you have a voice in your head that's constantly beating you up, everybody does. Always. It's, it's just a matter if you can steal the power away from that, because that voice is telling you, well, you need me to do this because I'm going to help you out. But you never get the results you want and you don't enjoy the process. Right. That's the bottom line. This is the saboteur. The, the, the worst thing is when people think, oh, that's me. I'm self-defeating. I'm like, there's no such thing as a self-defeating. What's happening is your brain was programmed by your childhood to keep you grounded. And now you're ready for liftoff. You're ready for liftoff, but your, your wings are pointing you into the ground. So what we need to do is change that deep programming. And the, there's a three-step process to do that. I'll tell you what it is. It's not a trade secret of mine. It comes from a guy named... Uh, Shirzad Shamin, he uh, wrote a best-selling book called Positive Intelligence, but knowing it isn't going to do much for you. If, if it does, fantastic. Um, but what really is powerful is this process of continuous change, because that process, it's like lifting weights. If you remember, and you're the person who can lift weights all the time, you're going to start out with something light, but eventually you're going to be a heavy-duty guy. And that's what we're trying to do. We want mental fitness. 
So this is the bottom level. This is where we deal with the roots of your problems. We're reprogramming that childhood survival program into an adult thriving program. If you can make your brain positivity go up, your life goes up. There's just no two ways about it. Everything right. changes. So right. you start out with, you have to be able to identify, I'm in a saboteur. Some of them are very sneaky. Some of them are very sneaky. If we don't understand that I'm in a saboteur place, we're, we're just, we're not going to get out of it. You got to see it. So that's the first part of their training. See the saboteur. The next part immediately, you, you cannot think your way out of a saboteur. I've tried my whole life. It doesn't work, right? Cause you're in a vortex. Every, it's fruit of the poisonous tree is what you'd call it. If you're a lawyer, everything keeps sucking down into this negative place. You move out of that place and into your heart. How do you do that? Very simple. Your brain is activated into the saboteur by the amygdala, right? Deep in the brainstem, it's the it's like the, the snake part of your brain. You move into your heart by moving into your body. That's where your heart is. It's very concrete. You start practicing body awareness just for, a, you can do this for 10 seconds and it can be enough to make you lead to a better decision because what you need for the better decision is better thinking doesn't come from the saboteur comes from the sage the sage is where you're living from your heart you're full-on authentic you're vulnerable you're courageous all of these words have similar realities you know courage isn't about bravery bravery in battle like yesterday we did you know veterans day bravery is you know the willingness to put your body on the line courage is putting your heart on the line being a wholehearted person. When we're living from that place, it's so beautiful, you know? This is, this is something that we can take any difficulty and say, yeah, that's really difficult. I don't like that. How can I turn that into something good? That, that glass half empty becomes glass half full. Everybody has both. You just shift from one to the other. Right. Now that shift takes you to the place of that question. Of course, there's a lot of details to learn about both of these. Um, we'll, we'll cover all that in the training. So this is a skill set that's going to keep on giving. Right now, the training is 80% off because you're helping me invent the parachute on the way down. So we all just got to get there together. Um, so when you say 80% off, that's an 80% discount from what, when the program's fully developed and we're not in beta version, I say we, I'm already putting myself into your program, um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that they will be paying 80% more for this so that that, will there be a registration link or stuff that they'll be able to go to and sign up for this course if they're watching this video before the course starts? Yeah, you know, right now, just send me an email. Okay. Um, that's one of the things that I have to invent, but my focus is really on the course right now. And I've already got people that I've sold it to. So, you know, I, it, that's just not the top priority. And right. yeah. But, but yeah, right now, shoot me an email and just put, you know, ninja skills in the top. And I will absolutely get back to you and we can talk about if it's a good fit for you. Okay. Um, again, this is, you know, I, I got to call it a, a, a course because you got to call it something, right. but it's not like, oh, you know, a busy professional. The first thought is, do I have time for this? You do. And this is not something where you're going to have to sit and it's going to take, you know, it's going to take less time than this video you're watching. I'll put it right. that way. Okay. That's, it's that simple, but it's totally life-changing because we're working on the operating system. We're moving you out of saboteur and into sage. It's a, it's a long process and it's just, but it's little bites mm -hmm. all the time. You know, um, my, one of my favorite sayings is it, the right thing is not hard to do. If it's hard to do, it's not the right thing. It's just really easy not to do. Innovation happens one little step at a time. And that's all I'm going to give you. And I, I swear, man, I, I like I meditated for years and that's been great. But this is not this is for people who are like 80 percent of people don't meditate anymore. I'm one of them, actually. But it's it's so cool because you don't have to. Meditation was designed for people who are like monks. Guess what a ninja is? Martial artist out there busy tearing things up. Right. I don't mean right. in a mean way. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, the truth is a good samurai in times of peace becomes a farmer. So everybody gets to eat. And that's right. kind of what we're talking about. Right. But I love the image because if you're a busy professional, you might need to start getting body awareness by just rubbing your fingers together. Like this has been work. 
This has been used for like half a million professionals in our country already, well, around the world. And a lot of them are CEOs. A lot of them are really high powered professionals. It, it, you can't stop the meeting to meditate. But if you start, remember Matthew McConaughey when he's driving that SUV and he's just kind of rubbing his fingers together? Yeah. That's all it takes to put you in a different place. Um, but but we have to learn several of those skills so that the, the brain is kind of tricky. It's always trying to move things into where it doesn't have to pay attention anymore. Right. Automatic pilot, you know, because the most expensive organ in our bodies is our brain. It uses up tons of energy compared to everything else. And it's always looking for ways to make itself more efficient. And that involves you tuning out. So it, when you want to tune in, you have to have creative ways to do that. Wiggle your toes, touch your fingers together, watch your breath. You know, there's different ones. But what we do is we train you to use this process over and over and over again until anything that comes up, somebody comes at you and you first recognize, oh, I'm getting into a negative space. First of all, you're going to know, I don't need to stay there. There's no reason for this to be present. You know, if I'm going to be a powerful leader, I don't have to be mean to people. As a matter of fact, Good point. If, if, if I'm mean to people, they're going to be scared of me. When something goes wrong, they're not going to tell me. Right. Every powerful leader has had that problem. I guarantee it. They're not going to give me feedback on how I'm screwing up. It's harder and harder, the more successful you are, to get accurate feedback from your team. So this is a, this is a class that will, well, class course, whatever, you know, I'm still trying to figure out. It's a thing, a thing. This is a thing. This is a training. Can help you, that can help you. It's a thing that can help you. So, so there'll be, and this won't be a one-time thing. I mean, people can take the uh, class course thing and yeah. then down the road when it's, uh, they'll be able to do it again or different people will be able to do it. And you make a good point because anybody who's brave enough to, to go with me on this journey and, you know, get the 80% discount, there's a few things they're going to get. The first one is a half hour a week with me, um, which probably ultimately will not be part of this. And I'm, I'm actually encouraging the people who work with me now to do the course. They're going to pay less for the course and the time with me than they would otherwise. Right. But that's what I'm committed to. I want to make this great. Everybody giving me feedback on how this is for them, I'm going to make it work. Right. It's going to work for the people who are in it. Okay. The other thing well, is, I'm, wait, I have two more things. I'm going to give them two months of aftercare because these are habits that you're beginning. And if you want to keep working on it, I'm just going to give you that for free because I want you to do this. I want everybody to do this. This is going to make the world a better place. Uh, you know, my mission is that people be successful and happy even when times are tough. And, and this will help you with that. The third thing is, what's the third thing? Anytime in the future, like a year from now, I, I'm going to have upgraded the course. It'll probably be eight weeks. You know, it'll, it'll have more bells and whistles. It'll have, it'll have more snappy. It'll be less dry. Sorry, I'm a scientist, you know. <laughs> but, but you're going to be able to take the course – for the same price rather than whatever unholy thing I'm charging at that time. So. <laughs> well, so the, it's, it, the value though, the value is there either way, whether they take the course now at 80% off or they pay full price for the course down the road, the value will still be there. Cause I can already see it. I can already see it. I've, I've got a friend that's a mindfulness coach and just some little basic things that you've talked about. She talks about, she charges 6,500 a year. Uh, no, no, sorry, 6500 a month to do her course, right? To do her mindfulness, right? Like, yeah, doesn't that put a lump in your throat, 6500 a month? Or You know, honestly, this is, okay, so, you know, I, I, a friend of mine, um, his wife is a nurse practitioner, right? Pretty stressful for everyone in medicine. Right. I honestly started this thinking, I got to reach out to doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. But my marketing team said, hey, you know, this is for everybody and people are responding to this. So I just said, sure, let's open the doors. But she's a nurse practitioner. She was looking for something like this. I don't know what the other people are offering. I know everything that I'm giving you is grounded in the best science I can find. And I've experienced all of it. So I know it works. 500,000 people have experienced it literally. So we know it works. But she was, she was looking at paying $8,000 for something that probably was not going to be as good as what I'm offering now for 497. Right. And I don't care. Yep. I, if I can get more people into it at that price, 
I'm super happy about that. Right. right. Um, okay. Well, that's that sounds good. I think you've given them a good lead in. They need to shoot you an email to your email address. So you're on top of me in this particular video. So maybe you're to the side in the other when we do the finished product, but we'll see. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you've been in Nashville for what is that, 20 years now? Yeah. 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 So, what a, so which area of Nashville metro do you live in? Oh boy, I've lived in a few different places. Okay. I, um, right now, I'm in Woodbine. Okay, um, I have a nine-year-old son, and a friend of mine had a house that he's renting, and I called him up, and he's like, "Oh, I'm about to close a deal, but you know, do you want in?" So I got a beautiful little house, like yeah, it's three minutes to my kid's school. Okay, so great. it's perfect. Yeah. Um, the, so okay, the, so this is the part of Nashville too. Yeah. where we find out from you what are some hidden gems around nashville whether it be a restaurant whether it be a fun place to go hang out whether it be some entertainment or some outdoor activities whatever it is a hidden gem about nashville we like to do about three or four or whatever but you know do you have a favorite place you like to go eat that's not a chain oh my gosh <clears throat> well if, know, not a, if not a favorite no, restaurant, I, just give me a second okay. honestly the, the favorite place to eat I, I, yeah, I never like chains. Uh, Urban Grub is a great local place. Yeah, I mean, everybody, I hope everybody's heard of that. Um, but that's fantastic. They make everything fresh in house. I, I could do a commercial for them right now. The last time I went there, I took my parents, um, my, my cousin's wife, she happened to be passing through town. And um, my nephew, he's a songwriter here. And we all went there. And oh my gosh, it was so fun. This guy, he's like, okay, you're not here to be healthy. And then, you know, we just like, we ate so much crazy good food. It was just okay. amazing. Urban okay. Grub is definitely- Never heard of it. So so that's- oh, really? Urban Grub. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we should go. We okay. should go. I'm Absolutely. in. Okay, so that's that's the first one. I, I, you know, I'm not that exciting a guy. You, you, I know many people have probably mentioned uh, Radner and that is definitely, that's just an amazing place, uh, highlight of Nashville. I will say that I was lucky to see a bald eagle there recently. Oh, wow. Cool. Just amazing, yeah. Yeah, several of the people that we've had on the show have mentioned uh, Radnor Lake, Radnor Park area, whatever whatever that name is called, but it's always good to reiterate. And, you know, our three viewers might have changed since the last time they watched a video. So, you know, uh, my mom, my sister, and my wife, you know, we might have, we might have four viewers now. Um, but uh, we're building this I'll audience. Watch. Yeah, it's 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 fun. So okay. So uh, what about what else do you do for fun when you're not working on your uh, thing, your course? Well, okay. Your so I tell you, my favorite spot. You know, Nashville is obviously known for Broadway and you know country music. Awesome. Yet the place that I take everybody is called the Bourbon Street Blues and Boogie Bar. Okay. And I, I'm telling you, it does not disappoint. If you're into the blues, um, it used to be a, a band there for years. It was called Stacy Mitchhart and the Blues You Can Use. Okay. And I love them. They're not there anymore, I don't think. But um, the last time I went, I couldn't even tell you who it is now. But they're just always good. You know, they have incredible studio musicians coming in from, we're in Nashville, right? There's, you just, this is why, you know, I used to be a musician. I guess I still am technically, but it's a little intimidating. I don't, I don't sing. I don't play out, you know, because you could, you could have a guy in there. I, I've had people in my office from the music industry, right? And they can tell the difference between, you know, the guy who's going to make it locally and the guy who's going to make it internationally. And my inner critic just goes, shut up, Doug. So, you know, I just like. Yeah, I, I, I have no talent when it comes for music or movement, you know. A ah. game of cricket and moving around on a cricket field is about as much movement as I am uh, able to say I do quite well. Is cricket what you had on your Facebook page that I was seeing earlier? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I built, my, so I'll do the virtual background. I don't know if anybody's seen this, but I have my own private cricket field in Kansas. It's no a kidding. Like all baseball fields. We built a clubhouse over there somewhere. And then this is a day that we did a drone footage and we were actually playing cricket 
for those of you watching the video, you can see this. For those of you listening to the audio, a cricket feels like four baseball fields back to back. And they have a strip of, uh, we use concrete in the center, covered with outdoor carpet. The ball bounces off it and comes up to the batsman. And the batter tries to hit it somewhere in the outfield. But there's no, uh, there's no foul territory. So they can even hit it behind them. So you can get real creative. I've got my cricket bat just right here. It's always by my side. You can get real creative and you can hit it over back over your head if you want, you know. So uh, so anyway, so cricket is the game. I call it British baseball. Yeah. So, uh, you know. Okay. Ed, thank you. I now know more about cricket than I have in my entire life. So. Yeah, probably more than you wanted to, but, you know, that that's it. But one of the things that I loved about moving to Nashville, did you know that Nashville has about 50 cricket teams? Are you kidding me? Ah, so think about all the British Commonwealth people that you meet around Nashville, whether it be Indians, Pakistanis, Sri Lankans, Bangladeshis, all of those from the subcontinent. But then you've got West Indians. So everybody throughout the Caribbean plays cricket. Uh, you've got Australians. You've got the odd New Zealander, like who let them into the country? You know, uh, I've got Susan Devereaux is an actress from New Zealand. She lives in Nashville. She's a friend of mine. Um, but uh, but you got Kiwis, you got the odd Englishman. They invented the game, but they've forgotten how to play it. You know, it's the lyric from a cricket song. But uh, they actually came back and won the World Cup of cricket uh, in, a couple of years ago. So they beat New Zealand. So we get we get all these British Commonwealth countries and we love playing the sport of cricket. It's just a matter you got to find a big enough place to put a cricket cricket field and so white's white's creek or something is that nashville white plains what i don't know there's something white creek or white plains white's creek sounds familiar but i couldn't yeah. tell you yeah there's a cricket field out there and then down in lewisburg there's a series of private uh, investor built three cricket fields uh indian or pakistani guy he, i've been down to there there's another couple of cricket fields around town so we go out and play cricket occasionally i haven't been able to play since i moved down here because business has been taking too much of my time but at 54 i've decided cut out the donuts because i'm about fitness fitness donut in me mouth so i need to like i need to move on from the from the fake fitness and get into some health so i can get back out on the cricket field because covid screwed up being able to play cricket so i'm looking yeah. forward to that i hear you covid i i've got my 20 from covid yep. i'm gonna work on that too so i you know i did these two i was telling you before i did these two dad joke books right and yeah. so uh i wrote one one was written in uh 2019 hmm. and then this one's written in 2020 and they said well why is it fatter i said because it was written during covid like most of us, you know, we put on a few pounds. Well, this book put on a few pounds for COVID as well. So those are my two dad joke books, you know. Um, okay. But uh, so, okay, so we've got we've got Urban Grub, we've got Radnor, we've got Bourbon Street. Blues and Boogie Bar. Blues Not to be Boogie. missed. Not to be missed, yeah. Okay. So can you shoot me an email with uh, laying out the website and a little blurb that you like about those places and we'll show it, throw it in the show notes. And then could you include a bio for yourself and I know you're working on a website. It's not up yet. A, oh, a, yeah, like yeah. Just a bio, a little bit about you, and then some information about the course, you know, and we'll put all that in the show notes. We'll throw this. I, th I think I already did, Ed. I think okay. I did that. Awesome. Yeah. Hopefully you have it. Um, hey, let me tell you one more thing. Okay. Because I, I, I just um, I just realized I was doing a, a Facebook Live earlier. I'm going to take this course too. Okay. It's that good. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, because like, I I've been practicing these skills for the last you know six weeks. Right. Um, from uh, another course that I'm in, and I'm this course I'm creating. I'm like, boy, honestly, I've sold myself on it. I want to take it. So I'm going to be right there with everybody. And if you do send me an email at drdougher.gmail or at gmail.com, um, let me know some good times to call you because I'll I'll just shoot you a call or shoot you a text, and we'll connect. Um, because, you know, if you want to get started, we're starting um, Sunday or Monday. You could start a couple days late, and that's not a problem. But I really want people to, you know, join it if they want to. This price is below Black Friday, I'm telling you. It's going up from here. And um, But <clears throat> really excited to get started. And well, Doug, Dr. Doug, thanks for being on the show. Uh, I'd like to circle back maybe a year from now and look at what else is going on and have you back on the show again. Um, but uh, it's been great. It's been fun. So uh, thanks for yeah, being on the show. Thanks, Ed. It's been a pleasure.